Welcome back to our live coverage of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. I'm Julie Hyman with Brian Sazi. And of course, we've been talking about all things AI to power a lot of that AI. We need semiconductors. That's not the only semiconductor news that we got today. However, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor, said revenues are going to grow as much as 25 percent this year. So here's someone to talk about all of this. That's Cristiano Aman of Qualcomm, the CEO there. Um, it's great to see you, Cristiano, first of all. You Thank you so much for being here. Um, how, what is this signal, this TM, TSMC forecast, about demand, particularly for chips for smartphones, which is your bread and butter? Yeah, look, it's a great question. Um, I'll go back to our last earnings call that, uh, you know, for the first time, you know, 23 has been a year of correction in the industry for a number of reasons. The macroeconomic, we're coming off that 21, 22 supply chain crisis. There was a lot of demand. and But in the last earnings call, we said that a lot of the corrections were behind us, and we see signs of the, of the smartphone market normalizing it. So I can't really make predictions at this point about uh, how the year is going to uh, plan out, but I'm cautiously optimistic, especially on the Android side. We have seen last quarter the market normalize, and uh, you know, we, I think the TSMC sign is a very positive one. I know that um, phones are are good proxy of consumer confidence, you know, whether you're going to buy a new phone or They're not. Pricey. Huh? They're uh, pricey. They have a lot of technology okay. on there. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of AI phone around here. There's installations, there's demos all over the place. How is this new world of Gen AI going to impact your outlook for chips? Look, this is one of the most exciting things uh, for Qualcomm right now, especially when you combine that with what we're doing to diversify and grow the company. We have spent a lot of time creating this computing engines that you can run AI on the devices that are battery power at the edge. Phone, PC, the AI PC, and cars. And, uh, and it's so exciting that you can actually, we did something which is very unique. We can run those large language models on your phone and you can do them very fast. Like we demonstrated with HN3 that just launched right now on Samsung Galaxy S24. I think they just had a, a great launch showing a number of new AI use cases running on the device. I think we're going to see coming in uh, the second half this year, next generation Windows PCs with power by X Elite that has a number of models running on the device. Actually, we, we have uh, uh, OpenAI Whisper model ported. We have over 40 different models ported into the device, and we're working on cars. So this is ex ex really exciting. I, If anything, I will say that's a great tailwind for the Qualcomm growth and diversification. Can you make enough chips to support this growth you're seeing? Because I hear this from you. I heard it from uh, Lisa Sue over at AMD. We've heard it from the NVIDIA team. I mean, how do you feed enough chips into this market? Oh, we don't. We don't have an issue. Maybe I should. I should talk about this in, in a different way. Um, in general, in general, I think, especially when you look at all the computation for AI and data center is a big piece of it right now. I think we will need a significant more capacity for manufacturing of chips. We even before what well, we saw the correction of the sector in 23. But the things we said before is still true. We're going to have to double the total capacity for manufacturing of chips before the end of the decade. And AI is just this new computation that has this huge demand for, for computing. And, you know, data center is going to go its own pace. I think what's exciting about what we're doing is we can do this on the devices. We can do this on phone. We can do this on PCs. We can do it on cars. And for that is we think that there's enough capacity those are very large industries and uh, right now we don't have we don't have a capacity problem but uh, demand could grow very very fast we're just the first uh, you know phase of a transition um, what's the number one question you're getting here about AI I mean as we said like every conversation we're having is about AI but you're in it so what's the question that you're getting from people yes um, it varies uh, one one big conversation is uh, you know uh, how can we go, uh, how can how this help my industry and what are the different use cases? And there's an incredible amount of interest in getting that thing on the device. Just think about automotive as an example. Uh, natural language communication is perfect when you are behind the wheel and the car is now a new computing space. So how can we 
add those capabilities to some of the models, some that are in development with the existing hardware that we have. Those are like, it's about use cases, how do we get faster? The other conversation is uh, how we should think about the impact that this technology has in the broader ecosystem. How do we keep the platforms open? How do we how do we regulate this in a way that you regulate uh, for the guardrails they're necessary, but at the same time don't prevent innovation and most important keep the platforms open. So because you don't know which model are going to be the model that wins, and it's going to be different models for different applications, and those needs to be available to run on all the platforms. Before we let you go, is there a new piece of AI that has changed your daily working life that you use all the time now? Well, I have been uh, uh, working with the Microsoft Copilot. It's very helpful, especially to summarize meetings, summarize uh, uh, chats and things like that. That has been useful. I've been experimenting with that. I think as a company, we're doing a lot of things with AI. We have been using AI to a lot of our development, how we uh, streamline access to information database. But I'm going to tell you something which I think, it's not I'm using, I think that was a very cool thing. You, uh, Before we start, we're talking, you mentioned about CES. We had a very cool demo. Was CS. A lot of people found that was very interesting. We work with our partner BMW, and we got the information that you usually have in the glove compartment. You don't check, right? The manual, but also the service information that exists for a particular car model. You see something on the dashboard, you just ask your car, "What is that?" And the car will explain it to you, will show you what's happening, will tell you what to what do. You mean and the little light that always goes on—I never know what it is. Well, you're going to know now, <laughs> yeah, and then it. we'll schedule this, this service appointment for you.